Hi, this is Johnny from Brewkeg Tap here today to do a little video about why a regulator is for life and not just for Christmas. So some of you will be getting nice new regulators as part of a keg kit perhaps uh, for Christmas or you might be treating yourself to a nice regulator. This is our Italian made Odeo regulator, our premium regulator is about £60, pounds. Um, a little bit cheaper on our website. Uh, and um, yeah, it's a fantastic regulator made in Italy and it's not something that you want to damage and have to replace. These will last a lifetime um, if treated correctly. So we're going to go through some of the issues you can have with regulators and how to prevent those issues. You'll see that this regulator in fact is a bit damaged. Um, the output pressure is set on about 12 psi. And in fact, this was a uh, uh, return smelling of beer by a customer um, because essentially beer got inside this regulator. So we're going to talk through how that can happen. Okay, so if we have a little look at the standard regulator, so this is a uh, 19 litre reconditioned regulator that we sell. Uh, there are two lengths of dip tubes, so below the gas um, in post, you've got a shortish dip tube, maybe about, in this case, about two centimetres long. Um, and then below the beer out, you've got a much longer dip tube that obviously is designed to um, pick up the beer from the bottom of the keg. Now, uh, the problem arises when you're um, new to kegs, you've just bought your new keg and you've filled your keg full of beer. Um, and so it normally happens when people are unfamiliar how the kind of system works. If your dip tube, so your gas dip tube is sat in the beer, so you've filled your keg up so that the um, beer is near to the top and you can see there, the dip tube just there, if the beer is um, covering the bottom of that, then that's where you might have problems, okay? Um, so I'm gonna switch to a different keg. This is one of our lovely Kegland. Um, it's actually one I use myself. Nine litre Kegland, um, NSF approved, uh, stainless uh, corny style keg. Um, and this is full of water and there's some pressure in there, okay? So imagine this is beer and I've got my regulator, connected it to my soda stream via an adapter or a cylinder, turned up the pressure to say 40 psi. Um, I've connected my gas and I've uh, rocked it backwards and forwards maybe for a couple of minutes to give the carbonation a bit of kickstart, mm -hmm. as a lot of people do. Now, um, if I then, whilst it's connected, if I reduce the pressure on the regulator, this type of regulator will actually vent the pressure. Now what that will do, that causes a situation where this can fill full of um, in this case, I'll show you water, but obviously uh, in normal cases, beer. Um, any situation where the pressure inside the keg is higher than the pressure that the regulator is providing, that's where you're gonna have your issues. It'll only be an issue when the beer is above the base of the dip tube. The regulator um, up to the gas um, in, and remember the pressure in here is greater the pressure being provided by uh, the regulator. Obviously, there's no pressure being provided by the regulator because the cylinder, um, the actual regulator is broken inside, so you can't regulate the pressure at all. Um, so this is a pre-damaged regulator, so I'm not breaking it by doing this, it's already broken, but this would break it if you did it yourself. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna point it in that direction, and I'm gonna put it, um, and you'll notice, we turn our regulator into a water pistol, you can see the water coming through the, um, the pipe um, and the whole of this regulator will now be full of water. Obviously, if there was a cylinder on the end there, it's just, I think the water is now below the level of a dip tube, so less is coming out. But obviously, if there's a cylinder on the end there, then less um, beer will come up. Um, and you might be lucky that you see the beer kind of getting to here and you're like, whoa, 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 and then you pull it off and you manage to save it in time. Um, but for a 50 pound lovely brand new regulator that'd be a real shame to damage it like that okay so what can we do to stop that from happening what can we do to make sure that a regulator is for life and not just for christmas well there's two options we've got a john guest 3 8 um doesn't have to be 3 8 but uh that will fit 3 8 gas line um it's a check valve um and effectively um as the little arrow on it suggests it will only let gas or liquid that way um, so essentially you would have your, your regulator at this side, your beer at this side. Um, some people connect them directly to the keg. I would buy one and I would connect it just after the regulator. 
um, and therefore your lines could fill full of um, beer but your regulator will never fill full of beer. They're about £12 each so they're not cheap um, but regulators about 50 quid, one of those extra is really worth the money. The other option which is perhaps the better option if you've got more than one keg is one of these jobbies. So um, we do these with barbs um, and but these are by far the more popular version. Uh, they have MFL threads on here, quarter inch MFL threads uh, and inside is um, so that's the side that would be connected to the regulator and this one's got space for three uh, kegs. Uh, we do them from three up to six. Uh, we sold out of our ones with two outputs um, but you could just get a three. So that's on, that's off and as I said they've got check valves in there. Okay so let's see how uh, these uh, manifold, um, these gas manifolds with the check valves work. So I've got my disconnect gas line or just uh, 3 8 line. I'm going to push that into one of the outputs and I'm going to turn that on. Now I'm going to put that onto the gas um, in. So this is pressurised. Okay. Um, our dip tube is still in the water and you'll notice that's on. Gas can go in that way. Okay. Doesn't matter if it's on or off. It's the same. Um, and so gas can go in that way, through that way, but liquid or gas can't come back. As soon as I pull this off, I'll show you, I'm going to, sometimes the, we've got liquid coming straight out, okay? So it's not under a massive pressure, but that's, suddenly, that's certainly enough, if that was beer or even water, that's going to break your regulator. So the check valves in these manifolds are really, really useful. And again, we'll, we'll make sure that your regulator lasts for forever, pretty much. Obviously for life, not just for Christmas. So there are a few other ways to make sure that your um, beer doesn't get into your regulator, which are slightly more low-tech and cheaper versions than getting yourself a check valve in one of those two different versions. Um, you can trim the dip tube. So get a dip tube out. Um, use, a, um, use a hacksaw to cut the dip tube. Just be careful that hacksaw hasn't been used to cut non-stainless steel because if you do um, you will make the stainless steel can end up kind of being impregnated with bits of iron and it will cause rust and be a bit nasty so use a fresh hacksaw blade to cut your dip tube uh, but that's certainly one version but still some people will fill them enough so the dip tube does dip into the uh, beer uh, the other solution of course is just to not fill your kegs that full um, but you're probably losing out on a good litre of beer, maybe a couple of pints, uh, by not filling it um, totally full. So, um, probably a combination of those things. Personally, I use a check valve and I haven't looked back since. I've certainly been through one regulator myself uh, back when I started to keg um, and I learnt my lesson that way. Okay, um, hope that's been an interesting video. Hope you've uh, now learnt how to look after your regulators uh, and please make sure that your regulator, whether it's a nice new one or an old welding regulator that you've had for years make sure that it's for life and not just for um, this Christmas and make sure it lasts um, as long as you can get it to last thanks bye